Hi, this is Tucker, and this is vocab list number two. The first word is abdicate, which is a verb, and it means to give up. And often references giving up royal power, royal um, status. So if a king abdicates his throne, it means he gives up his throne or his power. Two is achromatic. An achromatic describes something that is colorless. So something described as achromatic might be gray or black and white, but it does not have color. Number three is boorish, and it's an adjective. And think of the word boar, which is a wild pig. It might help you remember this word, which describes someone who is rude. So someone who's boorish is often rude, aggressive, overbearing. Um, so try to make that mental connection between a bore and being boorish. Delusion is a noun and it is a mistaken conviction, especially when it is more or less enduring. So what does this mean? A mistaken conviction is a mistaken belief, a mistaken idea of what is right or true. So if I believe that something is real or correct and it actually isn't, then that is a delusion, especially if I've thought that for a really long time um, and all the evidence is kind of to the contrary or goes against my beliefs. Someone who has a delusion or many delusions is described as delusional, which is the adjective form of this word. Number five is evoke. And to evoke, it's a verb. It means to call or summon forth. And when I hear the word evoke, I think of like the Harry Potter series, when oftentimes magic or magical powers are being evoked, called forth and summoned. Number six is incompetence. And oftentimes when you see the I-N at the beginning of the word, you know that the word the second part of the word actually means the opposite. So the word competence means to be very skilled, very knowledgeable, very capable. When you add the root or the prefix in to the front of competence, it means not capable, not able. So this word actually refers to a general lack of capacity, ability, knowledge, or fitness. In, that's needed to do something. So for example, if I go into a store and I ask the employee a question and they're not able to help me or they don't seem to have any idea what is in the store or how to navigate the store, I feel like they are demonstrating incompetence. They don't have the knowledge to help me as the customer. When someone demonstrates incompetence, they are described as incompetent, which is the adjective form of this word. Now, interestingly enough, number seven begins with the I-N as well, but the word is invaluable. And instead of meaning not valuable, it actually means exceedingly, very, extremely valuable or precious. So if something is invaluable, it is almost so valuable, you can't put a price tag on it, right? So for some people, their memories or their photo albums would be described as invaluable, right? They're irreplaceable. Number eight is monologue. And mono means one. So monologue is a story or a drama told or performed by one person. So mono meaning one, a story or drama told by one person. Number nine is passive. And passive describes someone, so it's an adjective. It describes someone who is, they say, unresponsive. I think probably a, a better definition is someone who does not react. Um, someone who, like the definition implies, does not respond. When you think of someone who's passive, those are the people who don't necessarily stand up for themselves or speak out against a group. They tend to kind of go with the flow and let other people make decisions. Number 10 is propaganda. And propaganda is a noun, and it's any institution or systematic scheme for propagating or continuing a doctrine or system. This definition is really complicated. 
Propaganda is basically the systematic use of something to continue, basically, to continue um, propagating, to continue kind of reinforcing an idea or a doctrine or a system. So maybe the best way to explain this is to give you an example. So during World War II, the United States, after uh, Japan dropped the bomb <clears throat> on uh, Pearl Harbor, or not dropped the bomb, but attacked Pearl Harbor, right? There was a lot of propaganda. There were posters, there were videos, or, you know, at the beginning of movies, there were like movie clips basically showing the Japanese as being evil. A lot of times they were, um, the pictures of the Japanese, they almost look like they were animals instead of people. And this is an example of propaganda, trying to rally support for the United States entry into World War II by showing this group of people as appearing evil or animal-like or unhuman. So propaganda is a way of kind of um, making people think a certain way, whether you use uh, writing, whether you use posters or images, or whether you use, you know, videos, movies, film clips. Eleven is recluse, and a recluse is a person who lives in seclusion. They say in retirement, but I, I kind of don't want you to think about, like, an older person in retirement, you know? Retirement could be going and traveling and enjoying the world. What this is talking about is someone who kind of stays in their house, stays kind of separated from society. Um, they are secluded, right? They're by themselves, usually by choice. And some people are recluse, um, are recluses because they're they're fearful of engaging in society. Some people are recluse because recluses because they have medical issues and they can't leave their home. So there's a variety of people reasons why people tend to live in seclusion. Or maybe they just live, you know, up in the mountains in a house by themselves, and that's why they're a recluse. Um, number 12 is subconscious. Sub means under. So the root word sub means under. Think of like submarine, right? The submarine goes under the water. Subconscious means being or occurring in the mind, but without you being aware of it. it they describe it as, but without attendant conscious or perception. So these are what, what happens in your subconscious is happening in your mind without you being aware of it. Um, a lot of people talk about the, the importance of the subconscious and what happens in our subconscious, the things that happen in our mind when we don't, we don't realize anything's happening. Number 13 is trajectory. And the trajectory of something, this is a noun, is the path from point A to point B that is made by a flying object, right? They describe it as a projectile moving under given forces, which is kind of unnecessarily complicated. So it's the path that something takes when it flies through the air or it moves through the air and basically is under force. So when you throw a you know, a paper airplane across the classroom, the trajectory is the path that, that paper airplane takes from the from the moment it leaves your hand to wherever it, it falls down or hits the floor. Number 14 is vertigo. Vertigo is dizziness. And sometimes people get vertigo after they go scuba diving because the being under the water has kind of messed with their equilibrium, which is your, your ability to be balanced or feel balanced. Um, and sometimes people get vertigo when they're really ill. Um, I get really motion sick on, uh, on, on, in the water when I'm on like a ship or sometimes even in a car. And, and sometimes when I'm feeling motion sick, I experience vertigo, the sense of dizziness where I'm off balance. And the last word is wantonness and wantonness is recklessness. So this is a noun. So someone who is wanton, right, is reckless. But this is actually just recklessness, which means to act um, without considering or worrying about or totally disregarding consequences. So if you do something that might have a negative consequence, you know it has a negative consequence, you do it anyway. That is recklessness. It's wantonness. So those two are synonyms.